Hey guys, Spider Matt here again, doing another little quick video. I didn't get to comment last time I was here, or last uh, video I made when I made my little classifier, I didn't get to comment on anything, so it's pretty rushed. So I just want to come over here and give you a quick check out of what I get, what I do here. I got the good old, uh, oh, zoom out. I got the good old Keen A52 classifier here, as you can plainly see. Uh, my Garrett uh, pan collection. This is all the stuff I bring with me on my normal routine, except for this uh, thing anymore. I don't uh, need that with my new classifier. This is my shovel that I use here. It's just a two foot long model. It's not very big, you know. The scoop's only two of my hands, really. So, anyway, that's why I wanted to give you a little uh, check out on that stuff. I wanted to. Uh, thank uh, Prospecting Fool. He's given me a lot of uh, good advice on YouTube. Reed Lukens, he's a really good guy too. If you're looking at prospecting information, these two guys are like uh, the best I've found online. And a little uh, thanks goes out to my buddy Mr. Ferris and Mr. England. Mr. Ferris uh, helped me with the metal and the uh, you know, preparation on my little classifier to do my little prototype here, and Mr. England uh, gave me the, or loaned me the uh, metal detector, which I still have to go do more work with. So anyhow, let's get to her. I just want to give you a real quick rundown on my little uh, classifier. Uh, this is uh, piece number one. Fits into the scoop. Uh, Looks a lot like that. It's just got a little lip uh, on the side here that holds onto the edge of the uh, thing here. And I've got the middle of it right by my hand here bent down a little tiny bit. That just helps, uh, you know, it's not the finished product by any stretch. There'd be a little nut there or something to hold, uh, hold this up just to keep a little bit of water flow. Before I did that, I was, uh, it would either fall down too far or it was just causing me a hell of a problem. So anyway, these two little things, they just hook on that lip, drops down, and you're able to see there's a very thin little gap here. So when the water flows over top of it, I prefer if it doesn't go any higher than this, like uh, halfway up the box, and that's like ample flow. If you've got it set up like uh, Prospecting Fool says, with this end hanging off the waterfall with lots of uh, lots of room, you know, so your tailings aren't collecting. Boy, this thing flies through the gravel. The last time, uh, the last video I made when my wife and child were out with me, uh, you know, I couldn't do the video any justice or the classifier, but I'll tell you, I got within an hour, because I only prospected for about an hour that I ran material through, uh, I got five times more material than in any given day that I was there just using that thing. So, I didn't have a quarter inch classifier or anything at the time. So, just to give you a quick peek, I'm just uh, sliding my classifier right in there like that. It goes in, I should give you a better view of it. This here just slides in like this. I'll probably stand up here like this, I guess, so you can see it. And it just feeds itself down to this point here. I made it all, so it's uh, it's all made out of aluminum. So, you know, it's not hard to unbend and, and do little simple modifications to it, of course. And there. Now, as you can see, there's a little lip I left here. Get this thing out of the way. A little lip I left here. So you can tell when it's in all the way. So I'll just tap the back of the sluice. Of course, not going to work. I'm holding the camera, but there you go. She just slid in. That's how I know it's all in one piece. Okay. So that's piece two. This here, as you can tell, it flows. It goes underneath this. Flows up like... I bet you that doesn't even go up a half of an inch that little ramp to give it its downward spout and it's on about the right angle as you can tell I 
I don't usually carry a level with me, but I keep this line right here on my sluice so I know where I want to be sitting. I want to have this, only this piece is right at the falls, and then usually I'll rock it up at the other end so I have a good drop off the end of the falls. Um, anywho, let's go with part three. Part three just pops in here. Ooh, don't want to make a bunch of noise. My kid's going to bed. It's uh, a little late. So this piece here, as you can see, I have a little arrow for my own uh, stupidity diagram. There was a little bit of troubleshooting that had to be done in order to make this properly. So my first design was almost on the ball. But I had to do a little touch up so as you can see it just sort of snapped down into place everything just holds in there from friction I just give this a little push in like that get out there yeah so there it is complete you drop your black sand and your gravel right here right on the very end give it a little throw even throw it down on the black sand as soon as it hits the water it hits this and sticks like glue almost. The rocks blow right off the top of it, rolling and uh, knocking all the debris off them. The black sand and all the harder materials sit right here. And as they go, you can just see them slowly sifting into these holes, these slots. They come down, and we got the quarter inch holes here for anything that I might miss. And then quarter inch holes start two inches before the black you can see I don't know if you can see it in the video there but the black matting starts right here this line here which is about halfway up the ramp the top of the ramp would be right here so any big chunks that fall are still hitting the whole bottom of the sluice box that was a big key for me I wanted everything to go inside the box before it even gets to the black matting and then we have the more or less all the rest of the holes are just security holes to make sure I get the rest. Um, as you can see here, a little diagram here where I, uh, where I messed up a few times here, making doing the measurements. I measured it to be uh, an inch of clearance above uh, this metal bar right here. And that was way too much. I couldn't get enough water to flow over top of it. I had to be in a river where the, you know, and I'm going to places that it's the brook. It's a four foot wide brook with three inches of water. So I have to do the V shape uh, funnel just to get enough water. And in order to fill this up, you know, I, I have to get a fair flow, but I, I just, with the other setup, I would have needed a, a torrent of water. And if you have that much water, it's just going to blow the back black sand at the end of it anyway. It's not going to matter. So I dropped it down to a half inch anyway. I'll give you a quick look inside the sluice here, what she looks like. Um, yeah. I can't wait to really start catching some gold, but I just don't have the... I'm just not in the right area for it anyway. But you get to see there's a... I'll just stick my finger in there to the bottom of that riffle. And then you can see it's from the top of the riffle to the uh, classifiers right to my first knuckle joint there. So it's about a, you know, three quarters of an inch above the uh, riffle. And it seemed to work really good. And that's all adjustable too. You know, it's not hard to adjust it. The finished product will be, you know, have slots there so you can adjust it for whatever material you want to run through it. <coughs> um, yeah. So uh, I just wanted to show you, the last time I was out there, I got a bunch of black sand here. It's an American container, as you can tell. Um, you know, there's not a lot of gold. Uh, there is a, a microscopic gold in there, but I can't even tell if it's gold because it's, uh, it's, it's tiny. And it could be anything, really. It looks like gold, but, you know, you'd have to melt down a million tons of it just to, or a million pieces of it just to figure out if it was a real piece of gold or not but that their amount of black sand I'll tell you honest to God my first eight hours right there with just the keen dumping it was that little tiny pile right there so 
with my classifier, that's how much I got, and that was just like an hour and a half of digging at the very max. More time spent playing around and going around with my Garrett me or my little metals detector. And so I just wanted to show you this real quick. This is my little handy bag that I use out in the woods. Yeah, it's got the little hook on the top here so I can uh, snap off a branch, hook it to a branch, carry all my little necessities, a little magnifying glass, and my two tiniest little flakes of gold you've ever seen that I tediously, painstakingly pulled out. Um, you know, my little gold book that comes with my Garrett uh, pants. Uh, emergency uh, present wrench, emergency knife, a couple magnets in case I drop my shit, uh, my little snuffer bottle, and a little screwdriver, a little uh, magnetic screwdriver, and of course my nuts and bolts that I need to hook everything together. So anyway folks, uh, I don't have the rights to uh, go any farther with my video, I'm not uh, allowed to go any more than 15 minutes. So. I just wanted to give you a little show here. Hopefully tomorrow I can get out there and uh, do a little bit more prospecting. We hope anyway. It's the July 7th today. It's right now 10.30 p.m. So I just wanted to go uh, and give you guys a little update. I haven't uh, put on a video in a while do a lot of mountain biking. My hips and joints have been pretty sore lately and it's been uh, about 33 degrees out Celsius every day for the last uh, four or five days and I do all my uh, mining. I go, I put the backpack on and I go on my mountain bike and I go do her to her. I don't uh, often get a drive there. I just, I just go on the mountain bike. So it's so much easier. Park the bike somewhere off the trail and take off in the woods and go do my thing. Way better than leaving vehicles on the side of the road and getting tickets and all this shit. It's just not worth it. Anyway, folks, uh, so uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, subscribe, and uh, like I said, if you want some really good information, I get all my information from this uh, prospecting fool. He's got some pretty good recipes on his channel, too, uh, if you're into what, what he's eating there. It all looks like dog food, but it actually uh, seems like it's made out of good stuff. <laughs> Not my type of food. I'm a lobster kind of guy. Uh, and Reed Lukens. This guy, uh, you know, he's out there all the time struggling and doing his thing, and they've got all kinds of good videos online. So I really uh, recommend uh, you guys going and seeing them. And I recommend you subscribe to me, too. And I'm going to keep coming out with uh, videos, hopefully every week, uh, you know, until the end of the season this year. And then, So you won't, this won't be the last you see of me.